Welcome everybody to another video of Ancient Greece Reloaded. Today we will talk about the famous king Tantalus, the son of Zeus, who caused an enormous curse upon his descendants. By the way, if you like the video, please hit the like button and subscribe to our channel so to stay tuned for upcoming videos. The name of Tantalus is a famous one in Greek mythology and still recognizable today, for the name of Tantalus is the root of the English word Tantalize. Tantalus was a son of Zeus born to the nymph Pluto. What is more, Tantalus was one of the favored sons of Zeus and was given the region of Sipilus to rule. Tantalus would get married to Dione, one of the others, Aka, the rain-bringing nymphs, and therefore Dione was a daughter of the titan Atlas. Occasionally, depending on the source, Dione is replaced in mythological tales by one of the following women, Taigiti, Evrythemista, Evrianasa, Clitii or Evprito. Tantalus would subsequently become father to three famous children, a daughter named Niovi and two sons, Pelops and Vroteas. Occasionally, the Aeschylus is also named as his son. Being a favored son of Zeus, Tantalus was often welcomed as a guest at the banquets of the gods. Similar to another welcomed guest, Ixion, Tantalus did not appreciate how lucky he was. Misbehaviors would start to mount up against Tantalus, for the king would often return to the mortal world and spread gossip about what had been said at the baguettes of the gods. Moreover, Tantalus would also attempt to steal some of the ambrosia and nectar served at the banquets, possibly in an attempt to make himself immortal. Tantalus was also accused of stealing a golden dog crafted by Hephaestus. The worst crime committed by Tantalus, though, occurred when the king invited the gods to a banquet hosted by himself. For some unknown reason, Tantalus decided to play a trick on the gods, and the king killed his own son Pelops. The body of his son was then cut up, cooked, and then served as a meal to the gods. Most of the invited gods realized what was occurring, but at that time Demeter was distracted for her daughter Persephone was in the realm of Hades, and so Demeter took a mouthful of the offered food. An angered Zeus ordered the Mire, aka the Fates, to resurrect Pelops. The Mire did this by recooking the meal in a magical cauldron, but it was soon discovered that a part of the shoulder of Pelops was missing, that is because Demeter had already eaten it. To replace the missing body part, Demeter would have Hephaestus craft a replacement made of ivory. Tantalus would be removed from his throne by Zeus, and Pelops was placed on the throne instead. Furthermore, Zeus inflicted eternal punishment to Tantalus. Tantalus' crimes of infanticide and cannibalism were some of the most awful considered in ancient Greece. And so, it was only fitting that Tantalus would be punished for all times in Tartarus the hell pit of the Greek underworld. The punishment of Tantalus was witnessed by Odysseus when the Greek hero descended into the realm of Hades. For all eternity, Tantalus would be made to stand chin deep in a lake of water, whilst above him was an orchard of trees bearing every conceivable type of fruit. Also, above Tantalus was an ominously balanced stone. Every time Tantalus leaned forward to drink the water of the lake, the water level would recede out of reach, and every time Tantalus reached upwards, wind would blow the branches of the trees out of his reach again. Thus, for eternity Tantalus would go hungry and thirsty, tantalized by the food and drink just out of reach. The stone above him would also provide eternal worry, a fear that the stone would one day overbalance and fall on the former king. What is more, Tantalus' family line would be punished for generation afterwards for the crime of the king. For the house of Tantalus is also the house of Atreus, a family line which was famously cursed by the gods. Punishment was meted out to the children of Tantalus for their own crimes, as well as those of their father. Vroteus would burst into flames when he insulted the goddess Athena. Niovi would rashly boast that she was a better mother than the goddess Lito, and her 14 children would be subsequently killed by Apollo and Artemis in retribution. Niovi would then be turned into a weeping stone. Pelops would succeed his father as king of Sipilus, but was driven out when Ilus invaded with an army. Pelops would travel to Peloponnesus, the region taking his name, and would marry Ipodamia. Pelops, though, would curse the family line father, though for he would cause the murder of his potential father-in-law and kill his accomplice in the crime. 
Many grandchildren of Tantalus would come via Pelops. Most famously, Hippodamia would give birth to Atreus and Thyestes. These two grandsons would be sent into exile when they killed their half-brother Chrysippus. Atreus and Thyestes would come to rule Mycenae, but a disagreement between the two resulted in Atreus killing the sons of Thyestes and serving them as food to his brother. Atreus would be killed by his own nephew, and the curse would pass along to two grand-grandsons of Tandalus, Agamemnon and Menelaus. Agamemnon would be killed by his own wife Clytemnistra, who was then killed by Orestes, the son of Agamemnon. Orestes would eventually end the curse, after he prayed to Athena and after facing the court of the Erinias. Thus, Orestes became king of Mycenae. Let us finish with the following saying. That which has become habitual becomes as it were natural. Aristotle. That being said, remember guys to hit the like button and subscribe to our channel, it would help us a lot. Thanks for watching and stay tuned for upcoming videos.